and sit down. Hello again. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Row Report. I am your Row 2 IC, and today we're going to talk about overlooked prepping items. Now, this by no means is going to be a complete list. Actually, I'm going to try and make this a very short video and just cover a few topics with a few items in each category, and it's just supposed to help you kind of get started on uh, different things to think about. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not new, you know what to do. So go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, bell for notification, share this with some people. Go ahead and check us out on Facebook by searching for The Rural Report. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, probably four different categories. So the purpose of this one and the purpose of this channel is for people that is just getting started in the preparedness community. And what we're going to do is cover a few things to get you thinking about it. Um, in the preparedness community, you're going to want to cover your basics. Before you do anything else, you're going to want to make sure you have food, water, shelter, self-defense, uh, fire, your basic prepper stuff. I have videos out on that, on new to prepping and, and the different things that you can do uh, as a basic prepper thing. But this is for the new and kind of the intermediate prepper people and maybe for some of you advanced people too that do, uh, that do tune into this. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and jump into this edition and let's get talking about the first category. All right, so let's talk about the first one. Number one is going to be medical. Now, when you get into medical, you're going to want everything from your basic boo-boo kit, which is going to be just kind of your um, topical ointment, your bandages, um, some sort of like maybe medical tape and some gauze and things like that. Just a basic small boo-boo kit for um, you know, some sort of a minor cut or something along those lines. So that way you can try your best to prevent infection or anything like that. Give your body time to heal. Then you want to move up and you want to have more of a to-go kit all the way up to when you get advanced to a very big medical kit, to a trauma bag, a stomp bag, things like that. Uh, you work your way up to the different supplies of medical. Make sure though that you get the training as you move up. As an adult, you should know how to use a bandage. Um, but as things progress, you need to take medical classes and go through and learn how to use your, your supplies that you're getting and your gear and whatnot. And that goes with everything, whether it's medical or not. But medical is extremely important because if you have a pair of sutures and you don't know what they are and you don't know how to use them, they're basically useless. So one of the things is a glass thermometer, the old school glass mercury thermometer. Probably everybody has one or two of the new age ones, the ones you put in your ear, the scan across your forehead or the little battery ones with the LED screen. Probably everybody has one or two of those, if not, maybe, you know, a couple more or whatnot. But if we're talking about a long-term SHTF situation, you can't replenish those batteries. A lot of times those take different than just your normal AA or AAA. And let's pretend that they do. If they do take a common battery, eventually those batteries will run out. Or what happens if you drop it, you break it, you do whatever. Now, granted, yes, you can drop your glass one. But if you take good care of your glass one, it will last a lifetime. It'll last multiple lifetimes. You do not need any sort of batteries. You just need to take care of it. And so I encourage you, that is probably one that most of you, if not almost all of you, 
do not have the old school glass mercury thermometer. Uh, another one is going to be dental kit or dental supplies. Now, that's often overlooked because there's a lot of people, unless you have dental issues or you had dental issues as a kid or, you know, you've had something go on within, you know, the past year or whatnot, that's easily one to overlook because unless there's an issue, then you're doing just fine. And as a side note for me, I went 30 plus years never having a single cavity and then within nine months i had two teeth extracted so i almost fell into this category that i went really long didn't need them i'll never have a dental issue and if you're in a bad shtf situation and you start having dental problems and those of you that's had dental problems know that's one of the worst problems to have you're going to want some way to at least alleviate some pain, some discomfort, maybe even a way that you can repair a crown that has fallen off, uh, some way that you can do some sort of dental work. Did you get the supplies that you can be a dentist? Mm, probably not. But you should be able to at least take care of some dental things. Um, another one is going to be the field glasses. There's a lot of people that need reading glasses. They need regular glasses just to see no matter you know what they're doing. Uh, a lot of people wear contacts. And if you're talking about an SHTF situation, if you depend on contacts, where are you going to get solution? Where are you going to get new contacts if they get scratched or dropped or whatnot? You know, same thing with your glasses. If you scratch your glasses or you know they, they fall and they bust, how are you going to repair those? Now they make what they call a field glasses and they are glasses that have the secondary lens with an adjuster on them. So that way you can move it back and forth so you can get it to where you can see. Are they prescription replaceables? Absolutely not. You should, if you depend on glasses or contacts, that is a prep item. If you depend on it, you need it. So I encourage you, to try and stock up, you know, it doesn't have to be the hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollar pair that you normally wear. Get the prescription that you need and the cheapest possible kind of most durable thing that you can get. So that way, when you need it, you have it. And then one of the last things is any sort of medication that is like a pain reliever or a headache reliever, burn ointment, things for a toothache. A lot of your aches, so your, your headache to migraine, your earache, your toothache, those are the worst things to suffer over. And if you can, try and stock up on those items now while you can. But you should probably look into herbal and natural remedies on those. More than likely, when something happens, even if it is a short, mid, or long-term uh, situation, if you don't have it, try and have the skill on how to make it, what ingredients you need, how much of it. That is a really good skill, really often overlooked. A lot of preppers that I see, they just run out to a dollar store, they pay $20, buy 20 tubes, and they think that they're set for the next hundred years or whatnot. And I'm telling you, it's probably not the best idea. So uh, if you think you're prepped in that, fantastic. If you think that this might be an area that you can do a little better on, then here we go. Trying to help you. All right. So number two on our list is going to be hygiene. Now, it, just kind of like the last thing that we ended on, there's a lot of people that are in the preparedness community that, in my opinion, make the mistake of going to a Dollar Tree or some sort of uh, box store that sells, you know, wholesale, and they will buy 20 of something or a skid of something, and they think, done, check off the list. But when it comes to things like soap, so dish soap, laundry soap, uh, soap to, you know, clean yourself, 
soap for, you know, cleansing agents to clean around the house or clean items or whatnot. There's ways to organically make that. That is a skill that you should probably learn and what items that you need. And those are the items you probably want to be able to stock up on or be able to forage for. And another one of those on hygiene, again, you're going to want to have some sort of probable deodorant because depending on the situation, the ability to shower every single day, extremely important. Yes, there's things like wet wipes and things that you can buy. Um, there's different, you know, um, camping showers and other things that you can do, but you are still going to be out in the sun, even if you are showering every day. So you are going to sweat when you perspire, your body produces odor. If you're around a lot of people. It's a lot of body odor. You're probably going to want to make some sort of organic, natural deodorant. Same thing with, uh, shampoo. I know some of the guys will overlook this because they will have short hair, but if you have a beard, you're going to want to take care of that. You're not going to want to get it all you know, nasty and things like that. Uh, but with women, you know, a lot of women and even men will have longer hair, you know, down to the shoulders, down half back or half of their back or longer. If you choose to keep that, you need to take care of it. Um, toothpaste is another one. You're going to need to brush your teeth again to try to alleviate any sort of dental problems. Uh, it's one of those things that's often overlooked that when it comes to hygiene, I just don't want to see new preppers or even, you know, intermediate preppers to make the mistake of, well, I bought a whole, you know, whatever big container or half a pallet or whatever, I'm set. If you think you are, that's great. I'm just telling you that maybe you should rethink it. If you don't have things like this, you know, you have two or three extra toothpaste. Great. That's a great head start. Maybe this might be the video for you to where you go. Maybe I do need to learn an organic alternative. So with that, let's go ahead and jump. All right. So number three on our list is going to be maintenance. So, I would assume that being in a prepper, unless you're absolutely brand new, you have some sort of basic hand tools. You have some sort of a hand saw, some screwdrivers, a hammer, basic things like that. But, how many do you have? Do you have backups to your backups? Remember, the prepper rule. Two is one and one is none. So, you only have one hammer. What happens if your hammer handle breaks? Do you have the tools to make a new hammer handle? And when it goes into like a saw, maybe you have two or three of the old fashioned hand saws. Perfect. Can you sharpen them? Do you have files to be able to keep it sharp and keep it usable? Or after six months, a year, two years, whatever of using it over and over and over, is it so dull it's not even going to work anymore? So I encourage you that as you look at your different things, when you look at proper items like a uh, axe, a hatchet, a knife, um, saw blades, things like that, do you have maintenance items to keep all those oiled, to keep them sharp, to repair handles, to you know go through and make sure that those last? If you have a really good hatchet, chances are that can last a long, long time, if not your lifetime. So make sure that you look at the tools that you have and that if you need something to maintain your tool, make sure you get the tool or the item so that way you don't make the mistake of thinking that you are fine when actually you need a maintenance item for your maintenance item. But with that, let's move to the last one. Okay, so the last item on the list is actually going to be skills. This one's overlooked because people will jump on a certain skill or even a certain item 
and they become kind of a expert or hoarder of just one thing. And if it's a passion of yours, I understand it. Um, I myself sometimes fall guilty into my fascination with paracord. I have a ton of paracord, but right now the things that I make in paracord and, and sell to, you know, different people and, and help out people and do repairs and uh, do all sorts of things with paracord. For me, it's half justifiable. Do I have a ton? Yeah. Do I have more than enough? My opinion, no, because I'm constantly getting more and getting rid of some. Uh, but it's one of those ones. If you are a firearms enthusiast or a knife enthusiast or, you know, anything along those lines, it's real easy to focus on that. And then you lose sight of other areas and prepping. And so you need to make sure that as you go through, if you have 30 knives, are they all taken care of? Are they all usable, functionable blades? If they are, great. Before you go buy 31, how's your water storage? How's your medical? How's, you know, this or that? Make sure you kind of look at it. But when it comes to skills, do you have the education on how to do things like how to make paper? how to make a writing utensil. It's going to be important, and I understand people is going to maybe question that. But, you know, kids are going to be in the SHTF situation. As sad as that is, and nobody really wants to see a kid suffer in all this, kids are going to be around for whatever bad event happens. If we're talking about a long-term situation, you're going to need to do education. How are they going to be able to learn how to write without something to write on and some sort of writing utensil. And so to be able to learn how to make some sort of an ink, how to make some sort of a paper is a very good skill to have. Being able to write notes to fellow community members, how to draw a map for somebody, how to do a lot of different things. Yes, you can have a ton of paper, but paper is a very good thing to have. Um, what about making oil? Do you know how to make oil? And I'm not talking about, you know, any one specific oil. Can you uh, make vegetable oil or sunflower oil, you know, for cooking? Can you create some sort of an oil that you can use as a lubricant? Uh, there's all sorts of different types of an oil. There's, there's oils that you can make that you can burn. And that would be a very good skill to be able to have. Uh, can you make candles? You know, your flashlight's not going to last forever. Do you have that skill? and be able to know the ingredients and what it takes to make a candle? Do you know what to look for, what to forage for, what you can use naturally versus what you can buy and prep up and have? What about your repair item for things like sewing or weaving? Weaving is an extremely good skill because you can learn how to basket weave and thus create a container so that way you can carry items. You can learn how to do a basket weave and use it for different traps and fish traps and things like that for hunting. Uh, there's a lot of ways that weaving will help you. Um, and the same thing with that, with the sewing is, you know, knitting, crocheting, things like that, because you're going to be able to repair clothing. You're going to be able to make new clothing. You're going to be able to create, you know, different types of packs and um, slings and different things for medical. Uh, there's a lot of skills that you can learn that will multiply the amount of things just because you learned how to weave so you can create, you know, a, a pretty little tapestry for a gift for somebody doesn't mean you can't learn or take that learned skill to basket weave some material together and now you have a trap to put in the river to catch fish, you know, or anything along those lines. So take a look at some of your skills, uh, look in, be honest with yourself and see what skills you lack in and maybe start looking into those. So that way, when the time comes that you need to fall back on it, you are prepared. So with that, let's wrap this up with a final thought. All right, so we just went through our short list here, 
Again, by no means is this a complete list or, or anything along those lines. I left out a lot of categories and a lot of items and a lot of things uh, I could have put down here, but I'm trying to make this as short a video as possible because this is just meant to get you thinking. Uh, I'm not here, and this channel will never sit here and be an absolute 100% complete guide. My whole envision of this is to help uh, people that's brand new to this community, new preppers that's only been doing this for a very short time, and even some of the intermediate preppers. I want to help you think. I want to show you an idea, give you a topic, and let you think for yourself. I will try and guide and steer you so that way you can find answers a lot easier, but I'm never usually going to come out and point blank and say, do this, buy this, don't do this, don't do that. So the things I gave you is just really quick examples. Um, maybe you've thought of them all, maybe you've thought of none, somewhere in the middle. But the point of it is, is to take this information and branch out. If I forgot something, leave it in the comments and, you know, let's go ahead and share. Um, take this information, use it, apply it. That's the point of all this, so that way we all can become better prepared. Maybe I can learn something from you because I am by no means uh, the most prepared, you know, uh, expert survivalist there is in the entire planet. I'm still learning myself. So if you have something to add to the list, drop it down below. Uh, with that, we'll wrap this up by saying, please remember to remain united. We're all prepping in this together.